this is one of the powerful sermons I've listened to this year. And I believe every Christian need to watch this particular sermon preached by Apostle Aaron Elsai. So watch carefully what God has to say through this anointed man of God. Go into the practicality how the warfare of the mind is and the arsenal that God has made available to us to contend at that level. One thing you must understand is that Satan will use every situation to harass your mind. Every situation. If someone dies in the family, Satan will use that debt to harass your mind. He will try to paint a picture of how vulnerable you are and there is no need for you to strive because you are feeble. You can be taken out any time. He comes to preach around every scenario. But you see, the, the issue is this. We do not have a covenant with death. We have a covenant with life. Death has no power over us as long as we drink the water of purpose. It means that our time that death will have authority over us is not yet. And what the devil does is that he begins to steal into your mind so that you begin to lose grip on the significance for which God apprehended you in Jesus Christ. My father in the Lord always says, and I quote, that destiny is stronger than death. And the reason why he says this, the, the depth or the origin of this quote, is that he is a minister of the gospel somewhere in northern Nigeria, and uh, he has been on the death list, the death list on several people that hate the labors of Jesus in the earth. He has been on their death list, and they have made attempts at his life at close range, and uh, every time he comes out without a scratch. So he postulated a theory. And what is the theory? Destiny is stronger than death. So if the devil can get to manipulate your mind so that your grip on destiny, your grip on your calling will begin to win, then death can have authority in your space. So he will take advantage of every situation that takes place. Just in case you fall sick and you feel weak, he begins to whisper into your ears. And what he's trying to do is to make you give up from within. And if you yield to the pressure of his mind-bending tactics, you become a victim. Are you still with me? He will preach to you whenever you are financially down and you seem to be financially incapacitated. He will show up. Every situation whatsoever, every circumstance whatsoever that happens in your life that seems to be somewhat negative becomes a very good premise for the devil to storm your mind and begin to make his suggestions. And as he does it, he has this this strange ability of resilience he is so consistent and if you do not have the word of god in your vessel you will believe the lie of the enemy and so i need to bring you into a few things that i deduced uh, because when we began to talk about the warfare of the mind our reference scripture was second corinthians chapter 10 beginning from verse number three for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations. Uh, somewhere along the line, I'm, I'm going to go into the question and answer. But we need to cover, there's a theoretical aspect that we need to cover. Uh, Pastor Philip? All right, so when the time comes, you'll put the questions on the dashboard. And then we will attend to it as the Lord gives us wisdom. This part of the syllabus, this theoretical part of the syllabus I want us to, com to, um, to complete is required uh, so that we can have a very firm theoretical context uh, that supports the engagement that we're going to be doing subsequently. Okay? So we need to finish this aspect of the syllabus because when we are done with the warfare of the mind, we go to another theater of warfare, and then another theater of warfare. Before we begin to talk about the arsenals that we have uh, available to us to prosecute this warfare, and indicators that will show that you are hitting the target. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing 
that exalts, exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that's the context of the warfare of the mind. And there are three approaches to arresting Satan's attack on the mind. Oh, I forgot something. Oh, Jesus. I have a friend in South Africa. He's a minister of the gospel. And uh, please, Philip, come. Philip, come. You need to pick my phone. And uh, you will get that voice note out of my phone. And you put it into the uh, audio system. I'd like everybody to listen to that voice note. Uh, when I met this guy, uh, I met him on... Where did I meet him? I, meet, uh, I met him on uh, Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger. Because when people send messages to our Facebook inbox because the messages are directed at me I answered it alright so sometimes at midnight I'm still answering messages as much as possible uh, I try to answer them uh, even though we have people that have that assignment but I do it myself so that I can have the authority to give them the kind of answers that they want and then I met this guy in the room attempting to chat I, 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 I read through the chat and I designed that his spirit was genuine. So, I um, decided to be committed to him. And when I found that he was a minister of the gospel, I decided to pay attention to his request. And um, the first thing we had to battle with was that he had a crisis in the area of the warfare of the minds. So we have dealt with the crisis. We just spoke yesterday night. So there's victory. But I asked him to make a voice note. Uh, of his experience. For the purpose of this lecture. So that our knowledge bank can be adequately fortified. Before we go into the practicalities. Um, the word of God is so vast. And the Bible is highly intellectual. And many times in order for us to understand how life applicable, the golden words of scripture is, we need to bring resources like this into our capacity building program. So, uh, Philip, yeah, this is the voice note. Okay, so, Pastor Philip has the equipment and we are going to, before we get into analyzing his experience, let's do the Bible study aspect so that you will not be found wanting in any aspect of this um, subject. Uh, accurate discipleship is furnished when we are biblically accurate and spiritually accurate. Can you repeat that after me? Biblical discipleship is furnished when we are biblically accurate and spiritually accurate. It is possible for me to be releasing doses of scripture and you have scripture in your head but you don't know how the practicality of the things that are in your head are. You are still as ignorant as someone that does not know because what you have gathered in your head does not afford you the equipment needed for practice. So we are going to go into the knowledge aspect and the engagement aspect and we are going to practice some of that before we leave today. We expect that before the week runs out, before next week runs out, you will begin to have testimonies of librations of liberty. And by the time we are hitting the month of June, uh, your testimonies uh, would have been quite significant. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, so one of the things I want to bring to our notice about the warfare of the mind, number one, is that we cast out devils and when you cast out devils, you expel demons through the agency of our authority in Christ Jesus. And when you expel demons, demons leave quickly, especially if your authority is valid, if your authority is authentic. Demons leave what? Quickly. Have you seen us cast out devils here before? The demons recognize our authority and they begin to tremble instantly and will begin to issue commands. It's a, it's a good place to be. Uh, issuing commands to, to demons. It, it, it's a wonderful experience. And if you have not issued any command to any demon all your life until this time, we will create an atmosphere, an opportunity 
for the devil to, to hear your voice and you will see the kind of ventilation that is administered to your soul when you realize that your words are not empty if you are still with me say amen, amen. so we cast out devils using the instrumentality of authority and such expelling of devils are instant but we cast down strongholds strongholds are of the mind we cast out devils that is instant we cast down strongholds of the mind the difference between casting out and casting down are you are you here now that's where i got casting down from i got it from uh, second corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god casting what down you see the thing about these arguments and reasonings that the devil brings our way is that they seem to exalt themselves over and above the authority and the place of the word of god in our life so they are always trying to grow height and the moment you consider the reasoning from the kingdom of darkness to be more valid than the word of god you become trapped in the manipulation that the devil has in mind so the bible says that there is a deliberate activity that we must switch into to to depose that authority to reduce that authority to what it really is which is nothing and nonsense through a process called casting down uh, whereas casting out devils is instantaneous casting down strongholds takes a process of time that means it is something you continue doing until you have reduced the height of that argument and it no longer stands in the way of your conviction if you if you allow it lie if you sleep over it you will become a victim and you will tell stories like like okay like uh, there's a preacher he said he had a had a vision an encounter in 1980 and he saw in the city of ayangba an auditorium that was 30,000 seater hallelujah and he was the pastor of that ministry that uh, had an auditorium that was what 30,000 seater and uh, he wrote the prophecy in a journal a very robust journal that was well secure and if anywhere there was a prayer meeting he would go and read it out that oh hear ye Israel in your city an auditorium will be built and it's going to be 30,000 sitters. That is when he got the vision. He went to everywhere people prayed and he shared the mind of God. Then Satan now reminded him of his poverty. Did, have you ever? Hallelujah. There was one day Satan wanted to deal with me those days. I put two of my surviving trousers on the line. <laughs> and when I came back to the line, it was the good trousers was the one they stole. The one they left had a hole at a strange place. And then wind now blew it. As the wind blew the trousers like this, Satan spoke. I said, you see, <laughs> what is left? This is what is left of you. <laughs> May you receive grace to, <laughs> to cast down. Satan, oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus. When the wind blew the trouser like this, he, he, he spoke. The sight was strange. And he said, oh, this is it. Satan knows the moment to puncture your faith. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. God bless you.